One of Christianity's biggest marketing problems is the way that they always make the thing they're against sound really fucking cool. Like, I wasn't all that interested in heavy metal music until some pastor told me that it was, quote, no more than fornicating with the devil, end quote. And I mean, that sounds awesome. I feel like that guy's got to have hella stamina, no? Anyway, they're at it again with Tony Perkins of the Family Research Council sending an email to all of his followers that warns them that Walgreens and CVS have become, quote, centers of death, end quote. What an awesome title. I mean, I don't know about you, but I feel way more badass if I say I've returned from the center of death than I'm back from the pharmacy. Hey, hon, I'm delving into the center of death on my way home. You need shampoo or anything? Fuck, that seems like it should be in the marketing or something. Of course, as you've no doubt guessed, the death the FRC is concerned about isn't actual death wherein a living being ceases to be a living thing. They're concerned with imaginary death, wherein a barely differentiated clump of cells ceases to inhabit a uterus. Specifically, they're scaremongering about a rule the Biden administration made that tries to stem the bleeding from the Supreme Court's Dobbs decision. The rule clarified that most pharmacies can carry mefeprestone, a.k.a. the morning-after pill, and dispense it through the first 10 weeks of gestation. Just a reminder, at 10 weeks, a fucking fetus is a prune with arm buds. That's it. Anyway, so the Biden administration issues this rule. Planned Parenthood issues a statement calling it a game changer. Norell's American president issued a statement applauding the FDA. And CVS and Walgreens issue statements saying, yes, please. And that earned the ire of Tony Perkins and his band of merry idiots who are calling on their followers to boycott the franchises until they cave. So, you know, if you need shampoo or anything... Of course, pharmacies are far from the dumbest thing sexist Christians are freaking out about this week. We got a really fun one on Sunday when not one but two scathing regulars latched onto the same hilariously stupid conspiracy theory and regurgitated it in their sermons. The regulars in question are Jonathan Shelley of the Steadfast Baptist Church in Texas and Stephen Cooking Can Be Fun Anderson of whatever two countries haven't gotten around to formally barring him from injuring them yet. And the conspiracy theory is that beer will make you a girly man. Here, we'll let Steven Anderson explain it. Quote, people who drink a lot of alcohol, they end up getting a beer belly. But not only do they get a beer belly, they get the man boobs. And I'll tell you why they get that. Not only just because of getting overweight, but also because the fact that beer has in it hops. And there are phytoestrogen mimickers in beer that actually hormonally can, you know, make you a more feminine man. End quote. Shelley was more direct, saying, quote, beer makes you effeminate. The hops in it will feminize you on purpose, end quote. Now, I'm pretty sure that he means beer companies are conspiring to emasculate society, but if you told me he actually thinks that hops, like the little seed cones themselves, actually had an agenda regarding human gender expression, I couldn't argue. Anyway, long and short of it is that, yes, hops have an estrogen-like compound in them, but saying that beer, therefore, makes you effeminate would be like saying the iron and beef makes you a cyborg. Of course, if they're right, that might explain why Brett Kavanaugh is such a whiny little bitch. Anyway, I think we could all use a beer after that, so I'll take my leave and hand you back over to Noah, Heath, and Eli. <laughs> 